Hello and welcome to another edition of another book review. This week I'll be reviewing The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. I'll talk very briefly about the author, go into a spoiler-free overview of the plot, talk about what I liked about the book, what I didn't like about the book, who I'd recommend the book to, and finish off with what I'll be reading for next time. Uh, Patrick Ness is a British-American author. He is mostly known for his YA stuff. This book, The Knife of Never Letting Go, is the first book in a trilogy called The Chaos Walking Trilogy. It started coming out in roughly 2008 and has since completed. But this book is about a character named Todd Hewitt, who is uh, a teenager. He's roughly 14 years old. He lives in a place called Prentistown, and through a series of events, we learn that he has to leave Prentistown and go to a place called Haven. Uh, the reason for all this is related to something called the noise, uh, which is in this world in Prentistown uh, for the men. There are no women in Prentistown. Um, which becomes a plot point, but for the men in Prentice Town, they have what is called the noise, which is where they can see the thoughts of every other character in, in uh, any, any other man in the village. Uh, Patrick Ness does a really cool job of kind of trying to visualize that for you when he has basically like scrawls and scrawls of just like words written over words, and you just get the feeling that this is this like very chaotic, very overwhelming sense of just noise coming from all areas of, of men's thoughts. And so the, the book is really just kind of a road trip novel of Todd going from place to place as he's trying to make his way to Prentice, to New ha to Haven, excuse me, and, uh, and to try to kind of discover the mystery uh, behind the noise in his town and, and things like that. He's being chased by uh, the mayor of Prentice Town uh, for reasons you understand in the novel, and uh, that's kind of the main antagonist of, of the book. There are other kind of antagonist underneath him, but he's kind of the main one chasing Todd. So what did I like about it? I like the fact that Todd, that Patrick Ness is able to kind of capture Todd as a teenager, and you really get the sense of him understanding this character has kind of these bursts of emotions. He doesn't always make the best decisions. Uh, he does things sometimes irrationally, but they all kind of come from that sense of being a teenager, and I think he handles that really well. Um, he talks back to adults when he probably shouldn't, uh, things like that. So I thought that that was handled really well. I think the concept of the noise is a cool concept. I like the world building in the book. Um, and I, I've, the, the biggest compliment I can give the book is it feels like a roller coaster. It reminded me a lot of uh, Mad Max Fury Road in the sense there's always this rising and falling tension throughout the book. You're not really in stasis for very long ever. And I think that there is probably a segment of YA readers who don't get that enough. So I thought that that was really cool. Um, as far as things that I didn't like as, as much, I think the underlining plot is kind of stupid and some of the, the things are not really revealed to you um, in, in a little bit of a timely manner. It does feel like sometimes that you can kind of get the sense that Patrick Ness is withholding things from you, less to do with like the characters withholding these things and more to do with like, I need to not tell you this till later in the book. Uh, the antagonist in game to me is never really quite clear, and it's possible that that's explained in the second and third books. But I, I wish it had kind of been explained in this one to make that character feel more robust and more full. Um, but those are relatively minor quibbles. I, I think that the the ending too. I think the book runs a little long. I think it's about 500 pages and maybe could have been closer to 450, 475. Um, not too, too, too super long, but by the end of it, I felt like, okay, we're going through this again. And my kind of, uh, my, my excitement cup was running low, uh, cause he had used so much of it in the book that I was kind of ready to, okay, come to, come to an end there. I will say this is a very much the first book in a trilogy, and this is not really a full story. This is really very much the first book. So it ends on a cliffhanger. Um, so I just want to tell you that going in, that you're not going to get a full story in this just this first book. It's really the first book of, of three, so you would have to read all three to get the full story. So this is me just telling you about the first book. I may or may not go on to read the second or third. YA is not really my, my favorite genre, but I thought this was really done well, and I, like I said, I think that if you're someone who is looking to get someone into reading and they're more action-oriented and they like characters moving a lot, they don't like a ton of internal monologues about things though we have that in this book if they want more action and more adventure I think this would be a good book for them there is a lot of I wouldn't say gore but there is a lot of violence uh, in the book there is some cursing there's not a lot of sexuality but if those things are things that are red flags for you I think on the back of the book it says ages 14 and up and that's probably about right of where I would recommend it for people so that is the knife of never letting go uh, I would recommend it for anybody who's looking for maybe 
a YA book that has a little bit more action uh, and uh, adventure in it. Uh, next time I'm going to be reading the An Ugly Truth, which is about uh, Mark Zuckerberg and uh, Facebook. Until next time, uh, please like the video. Please uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll leave my link to the uh, Twitter uh, account below if you want to follow me there. Until next time, bye.